Yeah. Is he going to go for a long lane play, which is something, for me at least, very unexpected from Stay Green. It, it would be something new um, for them to do, unless they go with a Blitz pick early on in the draft. And uh, BMG, known to man up with Ophelia against Tempest, so that's kind of off the board yeah. for SG right here. They go for the Keeper of the Forest early on. They don't want to give the three heroes to the BMG. Huh. I think that's a really good decision on their own. Yeah, just if anything, to take it away from BMG, so... Pick it up themselves, but now BMG going to finish off strong. Will it be maybe Super KG's hero or not? We'll see. Um, I think it depends. They could also just go for um, their support here to just not want to reveal, keep their options open. Uh, but no, definitely could go for Super KG hero here. Uh, I personally would prefer to go for support, though. Just keep, keep your options open. They should be pretty clear on what support hero they want to have this game as they're trying to figure out, okay, are we running Super KG on a more passive hero, or is he going to be on one of those hook heroes, in which case I think Engineer, big time favorite for BMG. Mm -hmm. Torture maybe even. Astro. They go from Astro of Arms, which is one of those heroes I don't really... When I think BMG, I don't think MOA at all. Yeah. doesn't feel like it fits their play style. It, it, but yeah, and then on top of that, again, he's he can be that support. He can be that main farmer. The game, like, what, what role is he going to be here? So really question marks definitely coming out here. From, uh, from BNG as far as what that ultimately is going to be. Tempest is the final regular uh, th top three picks here for State Green. So they get the Tempest Keeper combination with the Rhapsody. It's safe to say, guess what? State Green's going to be looking to group up and team fight and push. <laughs> yep, they, the, the strength of Keeper Tempest is that they provide so much late game and a lot of early game push. Um, they, they, they're so scary to face once they got their double refreshers. The amount of lockdown is just absolutely ridiculous. Really smart target to banning from Handskin here. Yeah. He's banning off the, the heroes that just makes Tempest Retreat absolutely ridiculous, which is Soy Bird, Demented Chalman, and I think even maybe even Balfagor needs to be banned here <laughs> from his side. It's been a while um, since we've seen that combo, but yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, but it's so, so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so no, uh, it's... I like State Green's approach. This is State Green like. We saw last time Lions are forced to go up against a hard carry. They dealt with it in their own way, which is just a really gank-heavy, active game. In State Green, I mean, they got known for playing these push-heavy lineups where they just group up in team fights. So they both have their own ways of addressing it. We'll see if State Green's method is as effective as Lions. Yeah. Was. Another band there, the Corrupted Disciple. Again, another one of those, that idea that you don't want to give them a good team fight hero group for the push and team fights went out earlier on. Um, scalping man by State Green. I'm a, the madman on top of that. You know, Scott is one of those heroes, though. It seems like if you are going to counter Scott ultimately, you know, going going hard push against it definitely makes sense. So they're, they're kind of shaping up as if they're going to do that, but they still are, they're still worried about the scout pick, so they still take it out here. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that they went Tempest. They don't want a madman or scout really screwing with the Tempest, slowing yeah. him down in the jungle, making him ineffective. Um, as Invis heroes are really hard to control, they provide... A lot of map movement. They are so mobile. They can be pretty much anywhere. If you don't see him on the lane, you don't know if he's invisible sitting there, if he's in the jungle, or if he's in mid, or doing something else. So getting rid of those invis heroes, I think, is something Stay Green almost always does against uh, BMG. Unless they're positive, they're not going to go for them. Yeah. Slither the final ban for BMG, and then there's the Pharaoh coming out from Stay Green. So definitely a very Jonas and fan heavy bans there <laughs> from uh, yeah, for sure. Stay for Green sure. side. So. Addressing him. I guess you could say BMG addressing Chessie, though, at the same time with their band. So, player for player. But now, where does BMG go? Again, we still don't know the Master of Arms. What is that going to be? What role? I'm fairly positive it's a support hero. Yeah. You wouldn't want to have an MOA farming as well as a Moon Queen on the same team. Both of them are very ancient reliant. So, having both on the same team kind of doesn't make much sense okay. as farmers. Um, but I could definitely see it happening as a support. However, I, I don't think I can remember the last time I saw Seal Kid play Master of Arms. So. Yeah. That's where it gets. It's it. a little bit weird. Yeah, exactly. it is different. Yeah, I mean, they that does give them that Master of Arms affiliate combination, although that we've talked definitely. about, it, obviously, Stay Green esque <laughs> from way back in the day. So maybe that's yeah, kind of definitely. what they're thinking too. It might have also been a pick more like I don't, we don't want to give away a Master of Arms. Yeah, what Stay Green is going to be this Tempest Rhapsody Master of Arms is going to be so hard for them to kill them. <laughs> um, but no, it actually does look like it's huh. going to be a farming Master of Arms. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, so much for that. <laughs> So much for that. Unless they're farming engineer. They've done that in the past, too. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure about that engine pick at all, though. I feel like lines are kind of a little bit picking into Stay Green's hands. You, against minion heroes, Stay, engineer's ultimate, really not that effective. Moon Queen, kind of the same deal. Not really that good against minion heroes. 
And uh, with Rhapsody on top of that, I think it's going to be really difficult when you're losing two of your main sources of damage in the team fights mm -hmm. to bring anyone down. So uh, I really like the draft for Stay Green's perspective right now. The team fights just heavily tilted in their favor at the moment. And Hag on top of that is just well synergized lineup. And, and I think they're picking really, really smart here. Yeah. I, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking Zephyr or Balfour over this final pick here for Stay Green. <laughs> and it, it's shaping up like it's going to be that kind of game here. Uh, from yeah, they have, so. they have a lot of options, though. I mean, they could still run the short lane farming pebbles, get a really early blink dagger on him, and just force those towers, which has on a suicide hag mid. Whereas I still think they could even put, like, a crack in Rhapsody middle. They have a lot of options. There's yeah. nothing really that's off the board for them right now. We'll see what that turns out to be. Devour is being right-clicked here. But again, it's with the way things are looking, it, if they were going to do something like a Super KG hero here, then they're going to be going aggressive tri lane. Magnus. Okay, Magmus. Yeah. Wow. I actually think they might be going for that aggressive uh, tri lane, putting Jonas on him. Yeah, exactly. Master on suicide middle to match up against the Hag probably when they go up with Ophelia, Mag, and Engineer. I mean, this is something that I know Lions like to do back in the day. Whenever you pick Tempest, they would man up with Ophelia if they had it. Yeah. However, something that's really important when you do that is you need to have a support hero that can zone away the jungler. And Engineer really isn't that kind of a hero. So Ophelia Engineer against Rhapsody Tempest, I think Tempest might still be able to be fine in his own jungle if they execute it properly on uh, Stay Green side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we need to see this final pick here from Stay Green. Like I said, I mean, they definitely have a lot of options, of course, but I don't know. Something's telling me. I'm thinking Zephyr. It's it's Chessy after all. You know, it's just just feels like that. So yeah, we'll yeah. see what it ends up being. But yeah, the Magmus pick up too. Again, Super KG playing Bubbles today. He's playing Magmus here. I mean, playing heroes we haven't seen him play a whole lot lately. So that's been fun. Ooh, yeah. they go Moraxis. Interesting. Yeah, no, I think I think that's fine. I mean, I would have liked an initiator regardless. Either, as you said, a hero like Zephyr that's really, really tanky that can sit up, or a hero that goes for a blink dagger. Marax is probably one of the hardest heroes to kill, and this is this is really the, the lineup for Sagrin right now. They're going to be so hard to kill for BMG with all the minions negating Moon Queen damage, with all the minions killing engineer spells. I think it's going to be really difficult for them to bring down anyone unless they get a really good start. So they do swap it up at the last second. Jonas and Fan's going to end up playing the Magmus now, and you got Super KG on Master of Arms here. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, to be honest, because they could have gone for the tri lane, but the problem with the tri lane would have always have been that are they able to shut down the Tempest and give Ophelia the jungle, which is kind of like questionable when you have an engineer. So they yeah. are forced into this dual lane mid, I think, more than what they would actually they want to do it. So um, Magmus, Suicide, matched against the, the dual lane, it's going to have a really rough time, I think. They're going to have to pull them a lot of region, just keep them in the lane. And... Magmus has a hole in their lineup. I think if he's able to get the Blink Dagger, he's going to have a big impact. But I don't think they're getting to that point. I think Stay Green is going to be so on top of this game. And I said Lions had the better strategy last time, and I feel like uh, Stay Green does this time. They just they got a lineup, they play a lot, and they know how to execute it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is even an understatement, man. I mean, yeah, they, they, exactly. they love these style of lineups. So no doubt they're putting themselves in prime position to take this game number two. Obviously very, very important because... You know, the last thing you want to do is give BMG extra momentum going into what could be a possible final game for them. So here we are, tied a one game in peace and a best of the five. So this is definitely that kind of swing game right here. Let's see which team's going to have the momentum and be on the verge of taking the grand finals here for cycle number 10. Again, what is the final grand finals of the regular season? Still can't believe I'm saying that, man. It's we've, yeah, It's been a long season, but we're, we've made it just through 10 cycles just about. And then there's yeah. plenty more to come. Man, February is going to be a busy month, man. I think so, too. I mean, the Thailand qualifiers are going to be so exciting. The Hunter Grand Finals. Yeah. Just in general, I mean, a lot of good Han should be expected to happen now. Yeah. I mean, teams are going to start really working hard and getting into it. And all the people that have been, like, kind of, I think, at least, like, from a personal point of view, you, when you realize, like, yeah, okay, we're not probably not going to make first seed in Han Tour two points, mm -hmm. you start getting a little bit more sloppy and you start practicing as much. But then, you know, now is the time. The qualifier is coming up. Lions is definitely the team to beat in yeah. it, so uh, you got to step up and you got to start practicing a lot. Hey. And I know our team definitely is. Exactly. So. I mean, you get a good run, and before you know it, you can be taking it and going to Thailand. Who knows? So definitely have the favorite team, as you said, BMG, no doubt. But it's uh, definitely can see other teams perhaps uh, pulling through. So apparently 
We're trying to figure out what, what's going on with BMG here. Throwing at the good old pause and not say anything, Strat. Okay, there we go. It's about like they're ready. Time. I, I love that. Yep. I love having Samuel L. Jackson for that reason, man. It's about <laughs> damn time. It's about damn time. Yeah, it sure is. Um, so interesting here. It looks like Thagreen actually are going to run a dual lane mid. And I really hope they don't. Because the <laughs> MOA engineer, like, if there's anything they're good at, it's crushing dual lanes mid that they are not hook heroes. There's kind of like this cycle of heroes that beat each other, whereas you have, like, a dual range lane crushes most dual melee range lanes, and then a hook lane crushes most dual range lanes because you're just able to hook in one of the range heroes and just kill them super fast. Yeah. Whereas a normal, like, Rhapsody Miraxis lane here, it's just too tanky for a hook hero to be able to do anything against, and that means Maraxis is just going to free farm and pretty much win the lane that way. Mm -hmm. So there's this little cycle of heroes that beat each other, um, and I think Swindle, hopefully at least, puts his dual lane either top or bottom. It looks like they think that they're manning up and putting their keeper top. Yeah, they are going to... They are sitting the keeper top. That is interesting. Yeah. So that, that definitely comes to that reasoning, but as we see, I mean, BMG's not going to be doing that. So... This is going to put State Green in kind of a funky spot, you would think. I mean, do you see them making adjustments when they realize what the lanes actually are? They're going to kind of just stick with it. To be honest, I think Hag is a pretty fine matchup against uh, Moon Queen. And Moon Queen's expecting to go up against a Keeper, which you can see by her not buying a lot of regen. She's going for that damage. Yeah. She's not really pulled a lot either. So, um, yeah, no, I think Hag is going to be able to do fine down here. So, no, probably no adjustments. Probably just going to sit on their lanes right here. I would have personally preferred, but, of course, I'm seeing it from a spectator's point of view. And But the way I would have set up my lanes was definitely the Maraxis in the short lane, trying to farm up, shutting down the Magnus as much as I like, possibly could. Yeah. And have that Hag suicide middle against Engineer my boy. Well, it is what it is here. So, as you're putting it, you definitely feel like the Master of Arms Engineer perhaps has the that advantage here in this middle matchup. So, keep a close eye on that and see how that progresses. Of course, Magnus versus Keeper up here. Yeah, Magnus is going to love that volcanic touch even more, so Keeper's got to be careful about using those animated trees of his and not giving him more targets for that, so. See right there, though. Great against the melee matchup. More access, though, off the bat. Already dropping below half-life just like that, so there you go. The power of that combo already coming into play, so it's safe to say again. They uh, they know that they have that advantage, too, so going to take it. Yeah. They're just going to kind of keep this pressure up. I mean, as long as they have mana for both their spells and hit level 2, they can just continue harassing. So, uh, if they get maybe the Rhapsody, like, if as soon as they hit level 2 here, it's going to be so scary for her to be up trying to harass. If she ever goes for harassment on MOA and he's ready for it, gets the stun off into Keg Turret, I think it's going to be a guaranteed yeah. kill. Moraxis does get that Arcade Shield second, so he does have a uh, way to absorb that charge shot as they're going to go in right there. He will use the Arcade Shield. But it actually wears off before he absorbed right there. And now he's going to get to take some return damage. So it's a good pressure being put out by Stay Green. But at the same time, BNG able to hold it off as Rhapsody really put in on those auto attacks before everyone falls back and throws in the regen. So definitely a very active lane overall, which is always fun to see here uh, when it comes yeah. down to it. So Yeah, and this is the way they need to play it. Right now, BMG are kind of used up all their mana. Stay Green are running low on regen, I think. No, actually not. They're doing pretty well. So this is actually really good for Sagreen. They're doing really well in this lane. Um, you would expect them to get really crushed, and they're not, which is good. Yeah. And there are no mana potions on the side of BMG, so they're not going to regen up their mana. And they kind of have to drop the harassment now and just let Sagreen farm. And as soon as Swindle gets his bottle, it's a complete different story in mid, and he already has it. So really, really good on their end. And he's a one more creep kill then. We're good to go with that bottom lane. Wretched Axe forced to blink out as Ophelia was coming in with the Minotaur. Couldn't get the best angle, though, and Hag's able to react in time, of course. So Moon Queen, her farm, 10-4 against a 9-1 Hag. So it seems like it does seem like Hag is actually able to contend pretty well here as Chessy playing that suicide role in this case, unlike his brother normally does. But uh, you see the Minotaur still right there actually missed, so not much more threat going to be for Wretched Hag right there in the meantime, and Ophelia will have to go back. To the jungle as a result. Tempest headed towards mid, by the way. Oh, never mind. Just going to the courier. And actually, he's going to fall back into the jungle. So, Ophelia is trying to be a little active down here. Do you, do you question that? Or are you, do you like to see the Ophelia being active against the hag down here? 
Um, I think this is smart. They need to ensure Moon Queen that she gets really, really good farm. The hero just isn't nearly as effective without really good farm as we saw last game. So, yeah. Ophelia sacrificing her own farm for Moon Queen to get better farm, definitely a good decision here. I like it a lot. Speaking of that, Ring of the Teacher finished. So, again, at about 240 gold per minute. It's still very early on, so we'll have to give it a little more time here before we can kind of gauge where things are going to how things are ultimately going to play out here. But so still very early on, the golden experience that is slightly in favor of State Green. But again, that only means so much uh, at this point. Top lane, Jonas a fan. He's having a hell of a time. 24-3 and three against a 19-2 and two Keeper. So Keeper's also doing pretty well. But safe to say, Jonas a fan, he's, uh, he's actually liking this lane setup up here as he'll even steal some of the creeps here from Tempest. And then he's going to run away. So looking good for him. Cut off on the top room, by the way, from the middle lane. As Rhapsody and Morax is protected right there. But... Yeah, Magnus, uh, I think you would expect it to start from him. The top lane. Yeah, he's, he's playing it really well. To be honest, Keeper has a little bit more base damage, so maybe not this kind of a start. You would expect him to start picking up a little bit later. But he already has his phase boots of four minutes. He did something very interesting, which was buying um, the Crushing Claws before they he went for the boots. And this allowed him to get the CS and match his base damage with Keeper's. Which allowed him in return to harass Keeper almost out of the lane, so. Yeah. Flames actually been sent, forced to send Regent himself, and Jonas just having the time of his life. The blink tag on him is going to be huge if he's able to get it. Yep. And that's mainly why I disagree with the way that this hit up the lanes. You think he's going to go for that portal key pretty much next year, or will they get the early item first? Um, no, I mean, I'd expect him to go for a lot of buildup. When you go for the phase boots, you kind of need to go the power supply. Yeah. Maybe even vestments. Not necessarily. Get, maybe not, doesn't need that either. Uh, but he sk skipped Steam Bath. He's very, very squishy for being a Magmus with phase boots and without a power supply right now. Mm -hmm. See a middle end again. A little bit of back and forth harassment. More access. He is Invis currently. Now, I'm pretty sure they knew that they had an Invis rune bottle there. So, might not be the most uh, most chance at a gotcha potential here coming out. But Moraxis is going to kind of work his way up. See if maybe they can get a little bit overextended. But, yeah, you can tell Master and Engineer are playing very, very passive here. Almost as if they actually know where more access is. So, good play on their part, and they are going to be fine in the process. Back to Moon Queen at the bottom lane. Again, the farm, it's it's solid. It's not taken off by any means. Wretched Ag currently is running back from base, actually. So, uh, she's uh, definitely being slowed down quite a bit. But Moon Queen is about 250 GPM now. And slowly but steadily growing. We'll see if it's that Energizer first or whatnot. Engineer, good job with the Kegstone right there. Actually, to block up more access, and is going to be able to bottle up the Illusion Rune top. Uh, he will run into Rhapsody in the meantime, but he should be fine. Oh, maybe not. Actually, more access cutting him off right here. Fork Atlantic. So there's a beautiful kick. So coming out from Seal Kid, though. Going for the turn. Oh, nice arcane shield from Swinomounts. However, he absorbs that charge shot, and he's going to be fine in the process. Wow. Both sides making some pretty big plays right there. So nobody dies, yeah. but a lot of action. Really good plays on both ends. I like... Um, the fact that Seal Kid waited with using the bottle there, he waited until he was on the high ground and was able to pop those illusions and really cause chaos. Which is, it's a small thing, but he waits until he's in Fog of War to use the illusions, which makes it harder for Stay Green to figure out which one is the real one. Just just making the magics come use out of it, so yeah. really good play on his end. Um, a little bit unfortunate there that Limp didn't dare to go for the root, because he didn't know which one was the real one, but otherwise that would have been a guaranteed kill on Rhapsody. Yeah. So the small things really do make differences. Would have been the Bloodlust go for the matter. Meanwhile, speed of that top lane, small things happening right here, or I should say big things happening, as CLK gets credit. The root came out at the last second, but obviously not enough. You see the coordination coming into play right there. Jonas the fan stuns in, channels the eruption. I was like, wait, is this actually going to happen? Well, he had Engineer coming. He knew it all along. So, again, good communication on their part. And they set up the Bloodlust kill at about seven minutes into the game. So that even excels Jonas the fan that much more now as he's looking about 318 gold per minute here, getting delivered his bottle earlier on in this game. But, yeah, good execution on their part. Set up that gank yep. right there. For sure. And I think that was a really important kill. As I said, the key lane really in this game is going to be the Magmus. He is a key hero for the Lion's Draft to work out. Without him having a really good farm, the draft just doesn't click for me at all. But the way they're playing it right now, it is working. And Super KG is getting really dove middle, but good awareness they're going to get away. Uh oh, and Moraxis actually might be in a little bit of trouble. He does pop that Arcane Shield, but Minotaur Sun doesn't care about that. Wretched Ag after the side, but down goes Moraxis right there. Ported from Moon Queen. The Moonbeam to hit Wretched Ag. The Moon Finale was also activated. Tempest going to fall. The Magma Slava starts setting all that up. Rhapsody goes down. What just happened? A four for nothing exchange. Stay green. Diving big time, and BMG just simply reacted. Yeah, really good reaction there from BMG. All five heroes ready with the teleports there. 
And I'm once again like I'm just looking at Seal Kid this game, and he is playing so smart. He is saving his skills. Yeah. And he, the, the Magnus stun there would have had no follow up if it wasn't for Seal Kid saving his turret, not overusing his spells, realizing that hey, we got this kill without me wasting my spells. And it, just a, a phenomenal performance from him. I'm just, I'm really shocked. Like he's playing <laughs> super well right now. Yeah, Fuzi was the MVP last uh, cycle. That's for sure for BMG, especially in those finals. Maybe Seal Kid stepping up into of deserving status for for this time around. But again. It is a one-to-one -one series here in a best out of five, so even no matter what happens in this game, obviously still even have a follow-up game, but definitely BMG picking up a lot of momentum right there um, as a result of that middle fight. And speaking of Seal Kid, it's back to the bottom lane to box out Hag again. Hag is still level five. If, if she was level six in that last fight, again, maybe a different story, but so close yet so far, even more access for that matter. I mean, they didn't have their ultimates for the most part, and they were still trying to make a big push fight happen right there. And, Obviously did not pay off. Now they're back in the middle lane. This time they do have a route ready to go. Tempest ultimate is up. Oh, no, down, excuse me. 90 second cooldown, so they aren't going to have that. But this time they are going to get the tower kill as uh, BMG wasn't really able to get in the best position to defend it. So take two is successful for State Green at least. Yeah. I mean, this is their strat, though. <laughs> Like group yeah, no, I mean, normally normally when you see a team get wiped like State Green did before, they're in a really, really horrible position, and it's going to be very hard for them to make plays happen. But this this is when the draft really kicks in. They got a really good draft. They got a smart strategy. It's really, really solid. And all they really need to be careful is to not lose those There's fights. the jump in right there. Port in Magnus with the Lava Surge. Stunt in comes. I think that's Moon Queen. Yeah, Moon Queen coming in. The root hits. The Moon Beam is going to be used on No Moon Finale just yet. Master of Arms is going to fall. Magnus running back in one second on the Lava Surge. Will it connect? Yes, he will. And a Wretched Egg right there gets the kill. So, so far, it's a two-for-one exchange in favor of BMG. They're going to try to make it a three-for-one right here. Rhapsody is going to try to get killed by the Ancients, if anything. But they're not going to let her. They take the kill themselves as Hanskin gets credit right there. So, again, stay green. They they reset. They group up and push. They get the initial tower. But the secondary tower... BMG, once again, ready to fight, and they make it happen. So, it's, it's do you think State Green's almost banging their head against the wall here? They are a little bit. If Maraxxus would have been 6 there, that would have been a different fight. Yeah. Rhapsody level 6, different fight. Oh. I feel like... <laughs> oh, sorry, Jonas fan making some big plays. So, taking advantage of that level 4 volcanic touch right there. Actually killing the creep as he stunned Keeper of the Forest to get the kill. But, um, big plays from Jonas fan, yeah. though. Definitely. I mean, Lion, BMG are just playing really, really well. I, I complained a little bit about their execution last game. This game, completely different. Their, their execution is flawless. They're playing really, really well as a whole. It's just they're coming. They're playing together, which yeah. is really beautiful to see. Um, but I was going to say, yeah, no, I think if State Green would have had their level sixes before they went to force these fights, complete different game. Uh, Mag was in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah. Uh, to go for it. Said okay. hi, and it was like, never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, he has uh, actually chosen to go for uh, a Helm of the Black Legion here. Interesting. Over his blink dagger on Magnus. Uh, but I can understand it in a way, actually, because this. I said at the start of the game that, well, you know, Stay Green really going to have a hard time getting picked off once they get their levels and have a hard time dying in the fights, but. Since they're so far ahead, this Helm of the Black Legion basically makes uh, Jonas invulnerable in fights. Yeah. And choosing to go for those phase boots. It gives him a little bit of tankiness that he kind of lacks out on. Middle lane. Magnus missed his initial Lava Surge, and actually Stay Green's trying to make the pain. That tap is a little bit of lockdown. Master of Arms. Want that kill? Will they even get it? No, they won't. It's Demon's Master Call. The Aphelios Touch. That's why you get those combo of heroes, if anything. And they turn it on a Wretched Hag. Tempest now, no ultimate. He's on the run. Rhapsody's here. Here comes Braxis. He's finally level 6. He will have them. No, he actually used the Matrix. That's on cooldown currently. Rhapsody's going to fall. Magnus, Helm of the Black Legion. He is way too tanky, as you just pointed out. The follow up now. The kick stun hit. Braxis, one auto attack away. No, the stun, though, on a Master of Arms. And it keeps him alive for now. Magnus trying to go toe for toe right here. Or toe to toe, I should say. He's able to dodge the Quake's done, and we'll be fine. Engineer, not the same story, though. Oh, see, okay. <laughs> he unfortunately got caught by the creep wave right there, and he does get turned on. So the Perseverance pays off at least a little bit for Stay Green. And they do push the top tower in the meantime. Does give it the force, but look at Moon Queen bottom lane. Chessy gets taken out, and she's also pushing the tower. What is going on? Middle lane, all three lanes having some action. Magnus gets the kill right there to Tempest. He is somehow still alive. This team. Oh, the dodge, the sidestepping. The sidestep king is apparently in the house. He's going to look to turn this around. No, he does fall back. And that'll be the end of that, but Super KGE. Quick, quick, quick. He's going to fall. Or that Jonas the fan, excuse me, very quick right there, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. A really good place from Jonas right there. He's he's really making the most out of his items and really playing with that Helm of the Black Legion. Like a lot of the time, you can see a player go, "Oh my God! Oh, beautiful, beautiful bait there." Yeah. Um, go for an item, 
that might seem right in the situation, but just not use it to its fullest extent. And even though I think a Blink Dagger would have been better for Jonas here, I think he, he is making the Helm of the Black Legion work. He's making it worth it, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important. That's uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's obviously what matters. And it, it, it is kind of strange. You'll see an item like Helm of the Black Legion as an extra encouraging active item, but it does make sense here as you put it. So another 1,300 gold saved up. Now he definitely could be on the route uh, to the portal key perhaps, but it yeah. obviously doesn't have it just yet, but it's even looking pretty good to maybe get in that Moon Queen in the meantime. No, they're not going to jump. They do push the top tower. Three of them are here in the middle lane, and actually Jonas Fan is coming to join them. There on the magma. He actually buys a mighty blade, so he's not even going the portal key here in the end. Yeah, no, just choosing to tank up here. Um, once again, it's not a horrible decision. You're going up against the Tepa's tree. That, that means the lineup is naturally going to be lacking damage. Yeah. No root up right here. No level six on Rhapsody. I don't think this is a fight Sabrina wants to take. Yeah, there's the port in Magma. He's taking some good damage, but again, he's so damn tanky. Matrix is up, but Maraxis is too low alive. He's going to end up falling. Bad Blast hits a couple. It's only level one right, though. Tempest in the meantime. No, Tempest a little bit had. He's going to fall. Double tap coming out for Fousey. And BMG is going to go cut throw here, pushing into the middle tower. Magnus wants to get the stun off. He's just in range. No, he's... He stutter steps. They are going to go for it. He will catch Rhapsody. And down she goes. A hat trick for Fousey to finish it all off. And I think 15 minutes is looking pretty bright here yeah. to stay green. I would not be surprised to see 15 minutes concede. Um, they're just getting completely outplayed. I think they had a really, really solid strategy. The idea behind what they wanted to do was really, really good. But the way they set up their lanes and the way the X play just played it out just did not work out well at all. They needed the level 6 before they forced that mid play. And then they did it again without getting to level 6s before it, which I just cannot agree with at all. Um, so yeah, I think a, a solid draft, a good strategy, a good plan, but in the end, just not making it happen. They did not play the lineup that they picked. Yeah. Bad Monkey Gaming. Again, looking very strong in there. And like I was saying, going into that game especially, it's, it's obviously they're all important games in the end, sure, but... Uh, now PMG, they not only take the 2-1 series lead, but that means they've won two in a row here after being down one nothing with State Green coming from the winner bracket final. So now it's State Green's turn to make to start persevering and come back and not only force a final game, but go all the way. And, hey, they've done it before. They've been down 2 nothing, and they've come all the way back to win it three games to two. So it's definitely not out of the question by any means, and especially with these two teams. Who knows what's going to happen? But BMG, they're, they're looking even different than yesterday. They're looking even much better than yesterday. And uh, when they fought against State Green, of course, in the winter bracket finals. So uh, they, 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 got, they got a wave to ride here. So I think we broke that down pretty well, though, as far as what happened. So I think it's safe to say let's go ahead and join in, or go into another break right here. But ladies and gentlemen, 